Hey folks, welcome to the Picnolic Symposium for the 7th of May 2020. Uh, today we're going to look at a bunch of things. We're going to analyze a bunch of charts using the currency strength histogram. We're going to start on the big time frames and slowly work our way down to the smaller time frames and uh, see if anything is uh, looking good. So what we'll do is we'll just grab the, the histogram and we are going to set it to scan everything. And the cool thing about the histogram is that providing that you have downloaded sufficient historical data, which I recommend that you do. And if you have not done so, please go back to the currency strength histogram uh, video and download all the software. And you can do this by dragging all of the symbols onto the chart and then going through the time frames uh, one by one. Okay, and I know this is a bit of a, a heavy activity, but at the same time, it'll ensure that you have some good data. And if you don't know what I mean when I say iterate through the time frames. It's a matter of going to, for example, a symbol. Let's go to the Australian dollar, American dollar. Then you just go down through the time frames like this. You go down two, up one, down two, up one. See, and it goes pretty quick. We just do this whole, this entire symbol. And there where it's a bit slow, it means we're missing data. You can see down here that this number's growing. And that's because it's downloading data. And then we'll go like that, almost at the one minute. There we are. So now we've got all the data that we need for the Australian dollar, American dollar. That's good. And so now we can begin to do our walkthrough. And I have all the data on my computer because I already did this previously. So what we'll do is we'll set the scanner. So enable um, alarm for all symbols. Let's set this to true. We're going to look for extreme readings. We're going to look at 500 periods. Again, you can use between 300 and 500, whatever. Um, it's just like, I mean, I like and anywhere in between that because then we you know we have a lot of data. With 500 periods, then we have uh, we certainly have enough data. With 300, we have sufficient data. I'll enable that. I see the software is kind of having a bit of a, a crunch. You can see it's thinking very intensely. Nothing. Okay, so then we go into the small time, we'll go to the, to the daily chart, and then we'll do the same thing. And we'll see if anything turns up there. Yes, so we've got a couple of hits uh, here. So, I mean, my alarms look different because this is a development version of the software, but they'll look, yours will look like this. So it'll have, for example, Australian dollar, American dollar short. And here it'll say, because this is a positive number, it'll be a short, because this is a negative number, as is this one, and this one, it'll be a long, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna disable this so we don't cause this to run again. I'm gonna leave this window open, <clears throat> and then we are going to go to, to these symbols one by one. So let's start off with the uh, Euro Norwegian Krona, and this is for daily currency strength, okay? So Euro Norwegian Krona, where are we? There it is. We'll drag it onto the chart. We'll see what it looks like. You can see here that we are we're pretty high, and so I mean this is very clear that I mean having price this far up is going to induce a lot of uh, number one profit taking and number two uh, sh uh, short positioning, and so price is doing that. We had an area of demand here, daily demand about two hours ago that was just removed. And so now we're starting to drift lower. So if we look at this, you can see that we can expect this to wriggle low. We also have a gap that starts here. And so until price gets to about here or so, we're likely gonna continue to wriggle lower. Okay, so let's have a look on the smaller time frames and see if we can find some areas that might be interesting to, to sell at. Um, before we do that, note that we are testing this area of four hour demand. We zoom out a lot. It's right here. It's tested once, twice. This is going to be the third test. Um, again, another phenomenal example. Look at this area. I mean, you were told days in advance before price got to this area, it poked into it, and then went up here. Look at the risk reward on that. I mean, your risk would have been um, about one and a half times or two times the size of this this blue box here, and look how far price went. Pretty remarkable. And so price uh, wriggled away, and now we're testing it. And so we want to find an area that we might, that we can expect price to maybe move away from. Um, looking on this, I don't see anything in here that I like. Something here, but not on this time frame. 
if we have a look on a smaller time frame yeah we've got something here but I'm not happy with this because it's simply there's just a lot of kind of messy trading there go to the small time frame and face something clear here we have something it's kind of popping up around here this is kind of uh, price cut away, the slingshot was pulled back and then we left. So we have something here, we have something tiny here as well. And these are these are probably work out for very short term trades. We've got this one here. Let's go to the bottom of the bodies, about there. Let's go to the five minute, and I bet you on the one minute we've got some stuff that's looking interesting. Okay, so let's have a look. What do we have, what do we have? Yeah, we've got this, which I like. You've got this, which is kind of here. When I look at this on the smaller time frame, it doesn't really look interesting anymore. So I'll probably just remove this. And it, the reason I say that is because this is an awful lot of trading here. There's no like price moving to an area and then leaving quickly. And the same applies for here. But I, what I do like is I like this one here. Software found it. That's a pretty nice tiny area. Um, we do have this one as well. Just here. Um, so there's a couple of things to look at. These are super intraday, very tiny areas. If we go back and have a look, maybe we had this really nice area, price tested it, we left. Let's see what we have. They're pretty messy. I mean, here price came up, it went down, we kind of cut away. This doesn't look interesting on this time frame, does it actually, when you go like that, so I wouldn't touch that. But this one looks reasonable we got this one here yeah pretty mediocre stuff if you ask me so I wouldn't get too excited about that pair um, but we can certainly see that price is wriggling lower okay so that is interesting for us but there's but there's I, I don't really see any areas of supply um, that I'd want to get involved with um, so we'll leave that alone let's go have a look at the euro Japanese yen I know the, the histogram pulled us into a trade on that pair here. I think we're at a, just a little bit of drawdown. Yeah, and so you can see that we're pretty low. I mean, this was daily, a daily push lower. So we had, we have price kind of poking into this area here. Last time price was at these areas, I mean, look what happened. You can see this is here and we left. Now we're down here and now we've actually poking, we've poking beautiful English three we poked into weekly demand as you can see we have a couple of actually we have one big area here just here okay now price is poking into it and now we'll have to figure out what's going to happen from there so I mean shorter term I think we're probably going to wriggle higher uh, to an opposing area of um, to an opposing uh, sell zone we've got something in here which might uh, attract some selling um, we'll have to wait and see um, also note that when you get into these trades you have to be super patient sometimes it can take one or two weeks for them to start to move and this is because you have uh, you you have a bullish and bearish liquidity in the form of uh, of limit orders and when price kind of moves into these these windows these price windows um, the movement of liquidity so the accumulation of orders to move price higher or lower is actually a very slow process and so it doesn't it doesn't happen instantly it doesn't happen like in a minute sometimes it can take hours sometimes it can take weeks so you just have to be very pa uh, patient and when you're looking on these smaller time sorry on these bigger time frames like the daily I mean you could be looking at a, a week or a two week uh, wait and so you want to be a little bit uh, patient with these okay so we have this set here and so we'll have to wait and see what happens and so I'd be keen to see this move within the next few days and maybe move above this high. And if it does move above this high, um, well, then we'll have to see where the beginning of the opposing sell zone is. We've got one just here. So this might be an interesting area here to begin to get out of the trade. Let's see if it got up around, around this area here. Let me move this. Maybe around here. So we'll have to wait and see. But that might be an interesting area for price to get out of. We'll just have to see if this works. Um, of course, not all of these work, but uh, most of them do. So we'll just have to wait and see and just be a little bit patient. Then we have the Canadian dollar, Japanese yen. And I think we've got this one as well. Canadian dollar, CAD, CAD, here. No, we don't, we don't have this one here. 
Um, but we are also I mean, looking pretty low, as you can see. We do have a very strong yen. We do have a, a very weak Canadian dollar, and this is because of oil. Um, but you can see that, I mean, price is where it is because we both have a strong yen and we have a weak Canadian dollar. Okay, so we have an incredible push away. So this is a really beautiful uh, scenario because this is what you want. Because when we do have uh, currencies diverging from one another, we have a mean like so, and you have the you have currencies going up and the other one that's going down. When you have this like that, I mean, this is like the elastic being pulled up on both sides. And so when they come back, they shoot back normally pretty quickly. Okay, and so we could see that happen here uh, sometime uh, soon. Um, I just like when this happens, when we have enormous deviation due to both currencies uh, diverging from one another. So this could be a very interesting trade. Um, we didn't get it, but we'll have to wait and see what happens there. And we have the Canadian dollar Swiss franc, which is here. Let's see. Yeah, this, see, we're in this one here, and this is kind of a similar situation where, I mean, the Swiss franc um, is very high and the Canadian dollar is very weak, and we're, we are at this level at a, at a pretty extreme area at a point where we have a price and balance. So price left here, we have a liquidity void from around here to here. And so we do have plenty of room for price to move up uh, from here. So I'm thinking price will probably return to this. We have like support and resistance. So this is kind of like, you know, one of those uh, flip zones. When I say flip zone, I simply mean where we had um, a price respecting an area and then price moving through that and then respecting the backside of that area. Okay, and so we do have that around this area of uh, daily su uh, supply. So we'll have to hold on to this and, and see what happens. So that's what we have uh, on that time frame. But let's continue to move lower and see if we have something moving or setting up on the smaller time frame. So we'll put this back on. This will run the alarm one more time. And when it's done that, then we'll click down to the four hour and the one hour and the half an hour. Right, we got those again, minus one, minus the euro knock. Let's go to the four hour chart. We'll see if anything pops up. Nothing popped up there. Let's go to the hourly. We had nothing there. Let's go to the half an hour. We'll have to be careful at this area here. This one here, once price comes back up to here, this is a very interesting area. This is actually also a nice area, but due to the fact that price has already been to this area here and here, I'd be confident holding it through this, but this is one I'd be probably a little bit careful about just here. Um, okay, let's go to the, to the 15 minute chart and have a look. So just clicking through the time frames one by one, because some of these we're going to see like huge uh, pushes higher and lower. We don't really have that yet. Maybe on the five minute or the one minute. But you can see the process is pretty simple. I'm not doing a whole lot. I'm just clicking through these time frames. So here we got something. So you got Euro Aussie and Aussie Kiwi. So let's turn this off. Euro Aussie Aussie Kiwi. So we've got the Euro Aussie here. We should be at an extreme level here we're at a very low level and so it's saying buy well we, we actually the histogram or the algo would have bought down here at the low because this is roughly where it poked through yeah this and so this candle here the very low of this candle is where we would have been uh, pulled into this trade because this is where it kind of came in so the, I mean the trades already happened but I'm thinking that if we have another run for these lows it'd be an interesting uh, place to um to begin to uh, uh, to get into the trade and you'd maybe want to be out of the trade when it came back up here just up here uh, let's have a look at the Aussie Kiwi Aussie Kiwi here so this is this is a positive number so this is gonna want to move lower okay yes and you can see that we're, we're very high okay so let's actually have a look at this on the bigger time frames no we're poking into supply here this is a is a 30 minute supply yeah, that's interesting. That's a pretty interesting area. And we're poking at this area right now. What I'd like to do is have a look on the, on the larger time frames and see. Yeah, it's like a pretty interesting area. I like this one as well. Um, and this is interesting because we had, we had this here. 
tested, tested, tested. This is the one here that caused it to be removed. So this is the one um, that we should that we could consider a trade at. So what you could do now, if you wanted to go to the small times, so you go to the one minute chart and you just look for the price to break down. It's already, it's, <clears throat> we'll have to see what happens. We had a big rejection here. And so now price is advertising these higher prices. Okay. Um, but note the histogram is going flat. This time, I mean, it was, it was bullish. Now it's going flat. And so we're probably going to start to see currency strength divergence at this level where we have the histogram maybe begin to do, oops, wrong thing. Something like this. And where this is going to continue to move maybe higher. Okay, so we have uh, strength, sorry, price going higher and, st oops, and strength going going lower. We'll have to wait and see. This is still playing out. So you might want, you could get in now or you could begin to scale in from the highs of the deepest retracement, which is the high of this candle here. Um, this might be an interesting area. But remember, these are really short terms. So you don't want to put these on and walk away from your computer for a, for a day because then you'll probably get nailed. You want to you want to be in front of the computer the whole time for the extent of the trade until you've gotten the risk out of the trade. So that's what we have uh, there. Pretty interesting. So let's, you know what, let's have a look on, on the, that was a five minute, let's have a look on the one minute chart. So let's enable this on the one minute. Let's see if we have any anything setting up. We probably have this setting up on the one minute as well because we're looking pretty close. Just here, let's see if we have any uh, alarms. Oof, we had a lot of alarms. Okay, so let me switch this off. Um, off. Whoa. Whoa, man, look at that. We've got tons of stuff to look at. Okay, we've got the pound American dollar. So this is a positive number. So this should be looking to move lower. Yeah, we have this lovely area of one minute supply. Okay, we've actually been up here. You know, I'd be keen to sell from this high and above because we're starting to, if we had a really nice strong push higher into these areas here, that'd be lovely because the histogram is is not going to continue higher, I don't think. Remember, this is one minute time frame. This is puny time frame. And so anything goes. Intraday volatility um, really slaps the one minute chart around like a, um, something fierce. And we also have, we have the pound Singaporean. Where do we have that? Pound Singapore. This is also a positive number, so the same thing happening. We're looking to move away from this area of uh, supply, five-minute supply. If we have a look on the on the 30-minute chart. Let's just see what that looks like. Yeah, we're getting. I mean, we've entered the sell zone, as you can see here. We've had this is a sell zone. Price went a little bit deeper. We've gone a little bit deeper, and so now we're beginning to challenge those areas. <clears throat> okay, so this is super short-term trading, and so we want to see like a run for the highs. Let's just watch this for a second, like a nice run for the highs here. I'm just going to pause the film and let this do its thing for a second and we'll come back. All right, just sitting here watching this do its thing. <clears throat> and now we're kind of beginning to poke into this, this cell zone here. Um, a pretty attractive area. I mean, I like the way that this, let's have a look. I really like the way that Price tested this area once, twice, and then price came back down and tested it and then left. This is a pretty nice area, but again, I mean, this is a one minute chart, you know, so I mean, I never trade anything off the one minute chart, but I think we're probably going to get a bit of a bounce at that area, but we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, looking at the histogram, I mean, we're certainly, we're certainly um, high. We're very, very high. And if we scroll back all the way as far as we can, we'll see the last time we came up to, to these territories. I mean, price had some some decent moves away, so there's enough from um, some intraday scalps, I think, um, at these areas here. But also note that price has already been up to this area here, over here. So this is the only kind of fresh area. Around here, we have like kind of like the release, the slingshot, and then here. So I'm thinking from here and above, would be interesting, but um, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, let's have a look at. That I close that blasted. Okay, let's do it again. I think I close that window. OK, 
Okay, we're running again. Let's close, turn this off, and then I mean all the all the all the pound pairs are going. Oh, I mean, there's a lot. You can see we're not going to go through all these, but if we have a look at the um, for fun the euro Danish krona, which is a pair that doesn't normally move a lot, you can see that we're when we poked up into this area here. You can see, and now we're starting to retreat, or we have already done it. So the move is already taken place. This is a damn. That's an ugly pair, isn't it? Look at that. This is what a pegged currency pair looks like. They move and sing like that, very mechanical. And you can see these lines kind of follow each other. We have intraday um, volatility, as you can see. But I mean, this is what pegged currencies look like. Um, okay, let's have a look at the pound Aussie as our last one. This is one minute stuff as well. And here we are, pound Aussie, pound Aussie. Uh, where did it go? Pound Aussie. We're positive. So we're moving very high. We're moving very high. And we can expect the price will probably wriggle lower. I don't like this, but I like this here. So I'm thinking price will go through this and come up to here. This is a nice one here. So we could um, we could have a look at that. Um, very interesting. You can see here that the, the, the British pound has gone through this line here. So that's a, that's a pretty strong pound um, and certainly unsustainable um, for, too, for too long. But note as well that, uh, I mean, when the pound goes up like this, we're just, sh we're just showing, well, we could be in a very, a very strong uptrend for the pound, but on the small time frames, like the one minute, I mean, price just pushes higher, then we come down, we push higher, we come down, we push higher, then we come down. And so even though we're going a straight line up, we're still having these these pushes going up and then going down. And so, the, I mean, looking at this is simply kind of capitalizing on, on the natural breathing of the market, essentially. Okay, cool. We won't look at any more of these. There's a, there's a lot in there. So we'll go back to this and we'll see. We do have a couple of do have a couple of positions here. We've got this one here. This is the, the franc Japanese yen. This is the one we looked at. And so let's see, we're acting at daily demand. Um, at Let's see what this was put on. I don't know if this was put on two, which is why it got in. Yeah, I don't know, maybe two, maybe actually this is a daily area. So if we put this back to 2.5, we go to the daily. I think this is actually a daily histogram entry. Let's have a look. Yeah, it was. I think this is maybe 2.0 on the daily chart. Yeah, something like that. I don't know what the configuration was at the time. Oops. Yeah, something like that, I think. And uh, prices reacting at this daily demand. We have the beginning of the buy zone, which is, I mean, the entry was a little bit above that. Um, but we had the slingshot was pulled back here. And our price is looking a little bit lower, which is expected. And so maybe we'll have a bit of a bounce. We'll have to wait and see. This is a really strong push lower. Um, so, I mean, anything can go in a situation like this. Let me reset this and put it back on. Yes, anything goes in a situation like this. I'd, I'd like to see some some hourly yeah you can already see this now slowly playing out where we have we have price going lower we have the histogram moving high and these are lined up nicely here and then here kind of that's kind of crooked line that may be a little bit better we got this one here yeah so maybe we'll um we'll see price kind of go like that who knows? We don't really care, actually. We just um, we just have to get enough of these on and have enough of them winning, and then uh, and everything's uh, everything's very good. So we have this one here as well, which is which is still on. This is kind of a smaller one. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit uh, insecure about buying Canadian dollar at the moment. I must admit, um, but we'll have to wait and see. Maybe this is one that I'll have to babysit on the very small time frame. Um, kind of get some risk out ASAP because this is a this is a trade that um I mean, yeah. For obvious reasons, you don't want to be buying the, the Canadian dollar because there's a lot of strange stuff going on in oil at the moment. Good. Well, um, I'm going to uh, leave it at that for the time being. If you have any questions, please uh, send them into the Discord channel or, or send them in on the YouTube video. And, um, and I'll catch you guys in the room. Thanks for watching.